hospital sessions, you will not be wearing rubber gloves due to the significant safety hazard of working near an open flame. Rather, you are required to wash your hands using the alcohol gel, remembering to practice proper hand wash technique and clean your hands thoroughly. It is vital that you appropriately label all plates you are working with in a suitable manner. Use a marker pen to label the base of each plate. The base is the half of the plate that contains the agar. You should avoid labeling the lid of the plate as this does not help identify the organism if the lid falls off. Plates should be labeled with your name, the date, your class set and the name of the organism to qualify as being fully labeled. Before starting to work, always turn the Bunsen flame to blue to ensure you're working in a sterile field. For illustration, the anatomy department has kindly allowed us to use this sagittal section to show how best to take swabs from your nose and throat. Firstly, throat swabs should be very carefully taken, as going too far back into the throat is likely to trigger the gag reflex and result in a mess. Instead, take the swab back as far as is comfortable and with a twisting motion, collect your sample. Secondly, nasal swabs should be taken with the swab entering parallel to the palate. With a twisting motion, collect your sample. Be careful not to go too far up the nose as this may cause discomfort. Start by drawing the swab straight down the center of the plate as illustrated in the video. Then rotate the plate 90 degrees. Proceed to carefully streak the swab across the first streak, snaking down the plate as close as possible to ensure adequate coverage with your sample. Once completely across, rotate the plate another 90 degrees and repeat this motion to completely cover the plate. Finally, to finish, draw the swab gently around the circumference of the plate and place back on the bench. Dispose of the swab safely by immersing in Vercon solution. Before starting and between placing each antibiotic disc, it is important to sterilize the tweezers by dipping the ends in ethanol. Once done, carefully remove the dipped tweezers from the bottle, keeping them angled downwards. Place them in the Bunsen flame to sterilize. Replace the lid on the ethanol bottle. Select the appropriate antibiotic disc from the stock plates located on your bench. Pick a disc up with sterile tweezers and place it on your streaked plate. Gently tap it onto the agar. Try to place the discs according to the guide which has been made available and don't forget to re-sterilize your tweezers. The remainder of this video will demonstrate how you should aim to build up your set of antibiotic discs on the streaked plate according to the guide. Sterilizing your tweezers between each disc, they should all be placed carefully, tapped down gently, and the whole procedure repeated as needed. Next, we will be using different bacterial cultures to swab our plates with. The purple solution is a substitute for illustration. Prepare and partially remove a sterile swab from its container. With one hand, carefully remove the top of the culture bottle and flame the neck of the bottle only, not the lid. Without putting down either the bottle or the lid, Dip the swab into the culture and carefully flame the neck of the culture bottle again, replacing the lid 
and proceed with streaking. Start by drawing the swab straight down the center of the plate as illustrated in the video. Then rotate the plate 90 degrees. Proceed to carefully streak the swab across the first streak, snaking down the plate as close as possible to ensure adequate coverage with your sample. Once completely across, rotate the plate another 90 degrees and repeat this motion to completely cover the plate. Finally, to finish, draw the swab gently around the circumference of the plate and place back on the bench. Dispose of the swab safely by immersing in Vercon solution. Completed plates will be taken from your bench and placed in a 37 degrees Celsius incubator overnight to allow bacterial cultures to grow. After 12 hours, the plates will be removed for inspection. At this point you will be able to see any zones of inhibition around your antibiotic discs. Presented here is an example of the type of results you would be expected to have obtained if you have successfully followed the instructions in this series of Keel Basic Bites videos. Thank you.